Hello, I'm Lina Kalein and in this tutorial we are going to draw a deer. And it's the male one with the great antlers. And I love to draw them, they are magnificent, beautiful animals. And the antlers are a bit tricky, so we're going to study this in this tutorial. This is the deer as I have studied it uh, at the first place and I wanted to de decide how big is, are the antlers uh, in comparison to the head of the deer. And I noticed that the antlers take a lot of space as you can see here. This is the front view of the deer that I want to draw but I want to give it a little twist. So it's turned away a little bit and well this one was not perfect because it looks like a cow but you can see how the difference is between uh, the space that the head takes in comparison to the antlers itself. It's quite a big space and I want to draw this deer with you. What I'm using for this drawing and the setup of the drawing is a simple pencil from my color kit. It's the black one and I start out with drawing kind of a rectangle and the, the neck itself that comes from behind, from below it. Also the lower jaw. Here's the chin as it goes into the neck of the deer which is quite broad and very masculine. Here you can just see the tip of the back. Once you have this set up you can put in the nostrils. The tip of the nose is where I head out from and once you have the tip of your deer nose, you can put in the skull. Now on top of the skull, there's, well that's really a hard bone and it's uh, really rounded by shape. And from the side of the head, I already place in the ears and the ears themselves are pretty big also. This is the shape around uh, the place of the eye itself and once you have that you can put in the eye pockets. Now from the hard skull on top of the head the antlers come out. Now that you see the complete drawing you can see how much space I've spared for the antlers because they are really really big. Here you can see the main line of the right antler and there are branches on the antlers and this is the really outer branch that I'm drawing. This one has three branches then as the, the antler itself goes back to the top of the head you can see three other branches and these are the two that are closest to the head. You can see they are not really stiff but they make a kind of a, a rounded movement. And here I want to make it a little bit less thick so I erase a little bit and then I hand, head out 
for the other antler on the left side. Here's the first branch. Then I take out the main line that goes out to the outer branch, which have the, the three little, it's kind of like fingers. Because there's a twist in the head, there's also a twist in the antlers itself. So I have to keep notice of that. This is the second branch that is closest to the head. And then I have fairly about how the antlers are going. Oh yeah, and this is the third the third uh, branch of that antler. Once, once I have this, this main sketch, I can fill in the shadows a little bit. Of course you need those shadows to give your deer the, the rounded feel that it, that it has. For the eye, I put in the pupil and I spare out a little bit of light that falls on the top of the eyeball. I also place in a little bit of shadow and um, that's on the side of uh, the skull of the, the eye. edge of the ear is quite dark so I can put it in quite dark and the inside of the ear I also place in and also the thickness of the ear itself the inside of the nose and the nose itself um, you can imagine that the nose is uh, kind of damp. It's uh, softly wet and shiny. So I do not place in all black for the tip of the nose, but I spare out little light fall that is uh, on top of the nose. And you can also see the mouth entrance is not straight, but it has a curved line. Underneath the chin, I place in a dark shadow, so the tip of the nose really pops out real good. Here you can see the muscles that are around the neck of the deer. And you can see them heading from behind to the front. It gives it that nice dynamic feel and the feel of roundness of the neck and the masculinity. The space around the eyes is quite white-ish and also the inside of the ear, so I do not touch that. The nose is kind of tricky and it has a lot of muscles also and here you can just see the left eye, it's just around the corner but you can just see the, the blackness of the eye. On the other side of course the same masculinity is, is happening and you can see the, the rounding that I uh, draw from behind to the front. Now that you've done that, you can color in the antlers itself. Now the antlers are not all black it's kind of compressed hair and it's it's hard but it's it's alive 
and the deer tend to shed uh, their, their antlers in, in, in spring and then they, they build up a new antler. What I do when uh, coloring in these antlers is I place little lines and I do not fill in everything all the same color. I want to keep the antlers very dynamic and I want to show what is in front and what is in the back of each other. Also keep notice of a little bit of shadow that uh, is falling on the antlers and on the branches of the antlers. On the left side I do the same but I keep everything a little bit more blurry there because the head is tilted a little bit and um, it's kind of turned away so I pay a little less attention to all the details on the left side Once you have this, you can always, always uh, place some more detail and a little bit of more shadow uh, in the rest of your drawing. But I always keep notice to, to build up the shadows that I draw in. Just around the mouth, uh, I place a little bit of shadow so the lips of the mouth really pop out really good this line around the eye is also very important and very typical for a deer The nose keeps being tricky. I've studied a lot of noses of deers and they're tricky, they're shiny, they're dark. And if you have a hard time with it, please look up some images on the internet. Now that most of my drawing is there, I place in the background. I want this deer to pop out of the mist and I really need a, a shady, foggy-like sky and it's also maybe the darkness of the woods what you see and the misty background. I always love uh, to draw in a background when I study an animal because it gives it a place. And once you've uh, put in your graphite powder, you can always take your pencil eraser and get some white back on your paper. You simply erase, like I do here, on the branches of the antlers, so the antlers pop out even better. You can also use the pencil eraser on the hairs of the deer itself and I just love to do that there's a lot of light hitting on the antlers and I simply draw them in back again after I've shaded it in then I take a 7B pencil it's a soft pencil and now I can put in that really sharp edges that I need for the nose, for the inside of the nose, just to get that little bit of detail 
Should you need it? I've speeded up the time here. So if you really want to draw along and do the complete drawing, you will really need to pause this film now and then. And start off was tape one on one, but now with all the shading, I simply speeded up the time so you won't grow a beard watching this. And it's still a sketch, so I really needed to speed it up the time a little bit so you can see what I'm actually trying to achieve here. Here you can see that I'm using the 7B pencil also for the sharp edges and the dark shadows that are casted on, on the antler because well even though it's a misty landscape you still get to see a lot of light going on here for the background I use the pencil eraser to draw out some grass I simply draw in little lines that are vertical to give the appearance that there's a grassy shine and a foggy shine. So the fog is going through the grass. And then I use my 7B pencil again to draw just beneath those lines that I've drawn out with the pencil eraser. It makes the pop the, the grass pop out even better and it still keeps that, that, that little bit of shine when it's, it's misty. You can also of course use that 7B to give your deer a little bit of more attention that he pops out even better and that he pops in front of the grass. I still think that when you draw also a little bit of background that your study of whatever animal you want to draw it really gives it its place and it makes it more dynamic and uh, it gives it a more real feel this is just a very rough study and well it's not quite finished yet but this is just as far as I wanted to take you along in this study of a deer. I hope to see you again in one of my other movies. And as always, I hope you take care. <laughs>